Happy Resurrection Day! Amen. God is good to us, isn't he? Amen. Amen. Well, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer this morning, and we are just happy to be here and praising the Lord, and He is worthy this morning, isn't He? Amen. Brother Ken, would you open our service? Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this resurrection morning, yes. for this resurrection Sunday, God. We thank you, Lord for the empty tomb. We thank you, God, for our redemption and the atonement that you paid on Calvary's cross. God, we thank you that, that we're made more than overcomers for you, God. Father, we pray that you bless today, Lord. Pour out of your spirit upon the service today. God, I pray that you anoint the praise and the worship, God. Let us, God, enter into the very throne, into the Holy of Holies today. Meet every need today, God. Touch every life that's here. Touch every heart that's here, God. Oh, Lord, I pray that you edify, build up, strengthen, save the lost today. Heal the sick today, yes. God. Yes. Touch the bound and the yes. oppressed, God. Yes. Yes. In Jesus' yes. name, bring new life. Yes. Because yes. you're alive, God. Yes. In yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Tell me the story of Jesus.
He's here today. Risen.
Amen. And it can be today. Amen. 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 Look, we, we have several of our folks that are fighting battles right now. Sister Melita is fighting a, a bronchitis as bad as I've ever seen bronchitis. And I'm believing that today will be the day of her deliverance. I believe that this will be the day of Ray of your deliverance. Not just, not just a touch, a deliverance. Amen. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord woke me up the wee hours of the morning and changed my sermon. Again. That's okay. He knows what he's doing. The title to Easter Sunday, 2023. Have you been there? That's my title. Have you been there? See, my life has been blessed beyond measure. I have walked on the Mount of Olives and stood in the garden. Matthew 26, 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And then Luke 22, 42, as Jesus was praying in that garden, If thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Yes. I've been there. I gazed into the temple court where Jesus was convicted. Matthew 26, 57. <clears throat> and they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest where the scribes and the elders were assembled. I've been there. I walked down the very streets known as the Via Della Rosa. Same streets where Jesus carried his cross on his way to the crucifixion. Matthew 27, 31. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him and put his own raiment, raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. The load of that cross was magnified because they had already beaten his body with a whip. They had already treated him so harshly that only, only God's mercy and grace allowed him to live through yes, the, the treatment that he had. I've told you several times, and I'll say it again. Every time as I went to these places, I tried to step on every stone I could step on, hoping that maybe, just maybe, I could step on the same stone where the foot of Jesus is. I've been there. Then agonizing me. and I looked and peered at Bob Calvary. And when they were come unto the place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. <clears throat> and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head was his accusation. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. I've been there. I've been there. 
I have prayed inside of an empty tomb. Matthew 26, he's not here, for he's risen. And as he said, come and see. See the place where the Lord had laid. I've been there. I've been there. And then we walked up onto the mount where the ascension took place. gave his last words to the followers and was risen up, taken up. Yes. He ascended. In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 2 until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. I've been there. This is quite a long list of my personal blessings. And I have some of you to thank for the privilege that I had to go to the Holy Lands. I experienced all of these places when I was touring Israel. Now, am I bragging? No, not at all. Not at all. You see, the truth is, I've been to all these places many, many times. Each time I would pray and seek God, open my Bible, the Holy Spirit would take me to those places, show to me the relevance of these places and what they had done and what they meant to God and what they could mean to me. Today, we're here to celebrate the resurrection. The resurrection. The resurrection brought us a promise. The resurrection brings us hope. Yes, amen. The resurrection should bring us joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. It's the resurrection that separates Jesus from every other false god that the world separates now. Right. That the world, the world separates God from all the other gods that the world worships today. That's right. Bro. The resurrection. Jesus is just alive right here, right now, in this room, in our life, as he was ever. He's alive today. He's here. Why? Because of the resurrection. Because the grave couldn't hold him. Ain't no grave going to hold my body down either. Now, I went to great lengths and great effort. Uh, I've already gone into Tower, Tower Cemetery, bought me a plot. And I, my, my plans are when I get the plot paid for, then I'm going to buy me a, a, a headstone and, and I'm going to have the headstone set right ahead of it so that when the day of the resurrection comes, whether it's my personal resurrection or it's the resurrection of everybody, you'll somebody will know that that grave is going to be empty. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now the reason I'm going to put my own headstone up there and put on it what I want on it because I'm afraid of what some of y'all might put on it. <laughs> Let's take a few moments this morning and let's go with Sister Mary and let's go on that first Easter Sunday morning. That first Easter Sunday morning. Matthew 28, 1 through 10. Matthew 28. In the end of the Sabbath, at the end of Saturday, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Sunday, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. They went full of sorrow. They went afraid. They went to that tomb with a very uncertain future. Verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat down on it. I like that last little part. Amen. Brother Jim told me that when he was moving the stone this morning, he got his shirt dirty. I told him, I said, that's all right. When you're working for the Lord, sometime your garments are going to get a little stain on them here and there. Amen. I want you to remember here that even the very earth 
was moved, the earthquake, yes. at the resurrection, on Resurrection Sunday. Nature could not be still when the resurrection took place. Right. Come on now, church. Right. People are all the time looking for a sign here and a sign there. That's a pretty good sign to me. If, if the earth shakes and the, and, the, and the tomb is opened all of a sudden and an angel from God is sitting there on taking a break. Yeah. Come on! Yeah. He wasn't trying to do anything in a secret. He wasn't trying to hide. He sat down in plain view. God sent me here to move this rock. Why did the rock need to be moved? It it didn't change anything. It, it really made no significance to the resurrection itself. The, the stone was rolled so that you and I could have something to remember by, something to see, Amen. something to experience, something to get it into our level of understanding. There's so many things in this world that we don't understand. There's a lot of things we're not capable of understanding. But our God loves us so much, He tries to give us something to hold on to. Something we can relate to. Something to bring meaning to us. I'm glad that angels were involved in this particular miracle. Why? The resurrection was real, folks. Yes, yes, yes. This is not a story yes. from a storybook. Right. This is a historical record shared with us. Yes, amen. A historical record shared with us. Right. And if you choose not to believe it because men wrote it into a book, I feel sorry for you. Yes. I really feel sorry for you. Because if you take that doctrinal position that you don't believe it because men wrote it in a book, then you're not supposed to believe anything you read in a book that men put in a book, no matter what the book is called. If you're going to have a doctrine and you're only going to apply it to one book, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> Hello? That's right. And Brother Bill, we come to church. We, we only come once here, and here we come here and call us hypocrites. I didn't call everybody a hypocrite. I'm just talking about being hypocritical about what we will believe and what we won't believe. I don't care what book it is. You're the one that decides whether you're going to believe it or not. Yes. It doesn't have anything to do with your teachers or your parents or your culture. Hello? You have been given by God the freedom of free will. And you can choose what you want to believe and what you don't want to believe. You say, Brother Bill, do you struggle with that? I sure do. Every time I look on Facebook, I have trouble. Should I believe that or not? We're looking. But I have the power to choose. Come on. When it comes to this, angels being involved, I get excited because, okay, angels were involved. They came and they moved the stone, sat down, took their lunch break on the stone so that everybody else could come by, so all the tourists could come in and. Come on. <laughs> Sister Nancy and I had to stand in line a long time to go into the tomb. But we didn't mind. We just started singing. We started worshiping. We started praising. As soon as we started singing and praising, everybody around us did too. And when we got our turn, I was hooping and hollering in the grave. I was surprised they didn't come in and drag me out. I said, I was having to be a little Holy Ghost party right there in the grave myself. Because it was empty. Just like the word of God said it was. in other places in the Bible, and I choose to believe them, that someday an angel named Gabriel yes. is going to sound the trumpet yeah. and herald in yeah. the return of Jesus to catch away his bride and we'll all go meet Jesus in the end. Yeah. Gravity won't hold us. Yeah. Ain't no grave gonna hold us down. Yeah. Come on, church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The angel says, his countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. Everything about this angel was brightness, and cleanness, and holiness, and purity. Yes, yes. Come on. Yeah. And for fear of him, the angel, the keepers did shake, and became as dead men. What other 
response could an unbeliever have when he comes face to face with the supernatural? They passed out like they were dead. Now the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. First thing he says, put away your fear. Does that mean that we have some control over fear? Yes. Yes. We so often say, oh Lord, take this away from me. Lord, change this in me. Redo this in me. Come on. I pray to the Bible and talks about God created me a new heart. Give me a heart that's more tender to the suffering that's going on around me. Give, give, give me some sympathy and compassion for what everybody else is going through. Build me up. And then the Holy Spirit shows me in the Word where all I have to do, if I want more compassion, all I have to do is ask God. If I want more wisdom, all I have to do is ask God. If I want more tenderness, all I have to do is ask God for it. And the Bible says He will give it to us and He will give it to us without even measuring it. Right. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Glory, glory, glory. I, I just love all the happy, smiling faces in God's house today. You say, well, it's just a smile. That's eh, so much more. You know, some people, some people think it's a hard thing to do to go to church. <laughs> hard to go to church. Yeah, it's no harder to come here than it is to go down to Walmart. It's no harder to come to church than it is to go to Walmart. And I promise you, our shelves are always better stocked than theirs are. Amen. Plus, they keep moving their stuff. All you gotta do is come in the door. At Walmart, they make you pay for what you get. You come here, we'll give it to you for free. You can have all the love you want. You can have all the joy you want. You can have all morning, you know that early morning service, sunrise, sunrise service, you know, you're going to that, because you're all just kind of acting like you're tired of playing me and you want me to shut up. language, 
They knew that when the angel said risen, that he meant he was alive. Because see, the Jews always believed in raising the dead. And they still do. Amen? They still do. Even to this day, they believe in raising the dead. <coughs> Obvious. Well, let's just look uh, He's not here. He's not dead. Not dead now. And best of all, not dead ever. Amen. Amen. Death could not hold him. Go quickly. Tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. So there's the message. Yes. The angel gave to the Marys. Go and tell. Mm -hmm. Go and tell somebody. Amen. Yes. It's great that you believe in your salvation. It's great that you believe in the love of God that's changed you, saved you from your sin. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, it's great that you know it. But it's even greater when you let somebody else know it. Yes, amen. Come on now. A lot of people say, days of miracles are past. Really? Every person that ever gets saved is a walking, talking, breathing miracle. Every person that comes to Jesus and makes Jesus their Lord and Savior, makes Jesus their personal King, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. And the people that knew me before I was a Christian, they'll tell you, that God is still a God of miracles. Yes, He is. I'm living proof that God is still a God of miracles. Thank you, bro. Is it going to tell? Because soon, <laughs> Jesus Himself is going to show and tell. Yes. Amen? Remember when we were kids, we used to do show and tell at school? Yeah. That break something, tell a little story about it? That's what Jesus did with the disciples. He met them in an upper room. He showed them the nail prints in his hand. Yeah. He showed them the spear in his side. He showed them the scars from the crown upon his head. And brothers, whatever happened to that crown of thorns? We don't ever hear it mentioned in the resurrection, do we? We don't hear nothing about it. Because that was one of the things that was destroyed when the new body, the resurrected body of Jesus. But the scars of it were still on his head. Why were the scars still there? To show you and me that it was really the same Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Same Jesus went into that tomb. It was the same Jesus that came out of that tomb. The only difference is, he went in as a lamb slain. He came out as king of kings and lord of lords. Oh, the one that's soon coming back. He's going to show us hell. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. <laughs> they walked in that morning and they ran out that morning. Come on now. Woo! How can we know that revival is here in church? You walk in or drag in or crawl in, but then you run out to the world to tell them he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive in me today. He said they had fear and great joy. You know what their fear was, don't you? Come on now. Their fear was the same fear that anybody would have in this situation. They were afraid people were not going to believe them. Come on now. We've all been there. We've had something we needed to tell that we wanted to tell, but down deep inside we was afraid that nah, they're not going to believe this. They're not going to believe this. I've been so tempted the last few days. I'm scheduled for another test a week from the moment. And I'm so tempted to just call him up and say, forget it. Because my Savior is risen. My healer is alive. My God can do all things. What's holding you back, Brother Bill? Fear. Yeah. Fear. Oh, what if there really is something wrong in my old chair? <laughs> and there's a part of me just knows that when y'all prayed for me yeah. a few Sundays back, yeah. my God healed me. Yeah. 
So I've been saying, well, I'll go ahead and have a test, spend all that money, so that I can testify I was healed. Amen. 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 But that's not faith talking. No. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me also. See, we've been to all those places. We've been to the garden where Jesus prayed through. We've been to that courtyard where they whipped him and beat. We've been down to Via Della Rosa. We've been to Golgotha. We've been to the garden tomb. And we all know it's empty. And we're here today celebrating that empty tomb. Not the tomb, the yes. fact that it's empty. Yes. That our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to the scripture, our brother. Yes. Because we've all been adopted. We've been, a, we've been made heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. Not in addition to, but with Jesus Christ. Amen. Notice that Jesus, when Jesus met these ladies, this is the third time that they've been told, don't be afraid. Angel told them. Fear was mentioned in, the, in, in, their, in their message that they had to go and tell. And now he said, don't be afraid. Stop being afraid of who you are. Amen. You're my messenger. You're my ambassadors. You're my voice. You're my hands. You're my feet yes. to a lost and dying world. You are the answer to what this world needs. You! Yes. Yes. As Jesus is alive and real in your life. Yes, amen. Have you been there? Have you been there? Amen. Because there at that altar, I experienced it all. Sister Nancy, you have another song you know our God is bigger than any problem. Our God can heal any sickness and any disease. And, any and the scripture continues to tell us, you have not, because you have not. Anything you need to ask God for today? What's our song? Today. 